Google Forms is an incredible tool that can be used in the classroom. This series of videos is going to show you how you can use some of the more advanced features of Google Forms. So to start with, we need to create a form. So I'm going to very quickly go through the process of how we can create a form, but this will be covered in a basic sessions of Google Forms. So we want to make sure that anybody using the form, uh, we're recording the username, so we want to cl click these ones, and we want to show a progress bar at the bottom, because the form that we're going to create is a non-linear form that has multiple pages. So let's create our first question. The form that we're going to create in this video is something that you could possibly use in the classroom. It's where your students may answer a group of questions based on what you've taught in that lesson. And then we're going to list the lessons down. So our first question would be lesson. And then in here, we're going to say lesson one. And this was a spreadsheet lesson I was doing with the children. Lesson two, this is databases. And lesson three is word processing. What we want the children to do is when they click on one of these, they go to a set of questions based on that lesson. So this is what we call a non-linear form. To do this, we must click on age-based answer. We're going to click on that, and then we have a list of options here. Now, we can't use these yet because we have to set up the pages. Now, we want to make this a required question, so we click on required. If we click on advanced settings here, this gives us the option to shuffle the order, but we don't want to do that. Let's click done. Now what we want to do is add an item. Now we want to add a page break because we want to create a set of questions for a specific lesson. So let's create page break, and this is spreadsheet. We could put a description in here about the lesson, we could put the learning intention, etc., etc., in this area if we wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it blank for the purpose of this training. And now what we want to do is start adding the questions. Now for the purpose of this training, I've actually created one of these earlier. So I'm just gonna click on that one. And here you can see I've created some questions specifically for this lesson. I just wanna go through these questions very quickly. If we click on the edit button here, we have this option down here for advanced settings, and we can have data validation. We could click on data validation, and we have different options here, and we want them to answer this question with a minimum amount of characters. So I'm gonna say 100 characters, and then done. So you can see here, I've created a spreadsheets. I've created another page for a spreadsheet video. I've created a database page, and again, a database video page, word processing, etc. So now we need to go to the top, and we need to edit this page. So let's edit this page, and now what we can do is we can look at these options here, because we ticked this button here, go to page based on answer. So let's click this drop-down menu, and when they choose this, we want them to go to the spreadsheets page. When they choose the databases, we want them to go to the database page. And so the same for the word processing. And then we can click done. Now that's not everything. When they choose a the spreadsheet page, they're gonna to go to this page here. So they're gonna answer these questions, it's gonna go down, and then it says here, after this page, what do we want them to do? Well, we'd like them to see this spreadsheet video. So we continue to the next page. But after the spreadsheet video, we don't want them to go to the databases lesson. We want them to submit the form. So we need to click on submit form. The same goes for databases. So here we would say after the database video, we can submit the form. And when we come down to word processing, because this is the last page, you don't get that option because it's going to go straight to submit form afterwards. One of the other advanced features that you've got within Google Forms is this idea of adding videos or images to your form. So what we can do is we can click on this drop-down menu. We want to add a video into this particular page. Drop-down menu and then click video. We can either insert the URL if we know what the video URL is, or we can video search. And then we search Google Spreadsheets for Beginners. So let's click on Google Spreadsheets for Beginners and select that video. It's going to enter the video into that page. And then we can centralize that. We can change the size. And then click Done. And we can do the same for databases and word processing.
Okay, now we've added the three videos. We have a working form, and now we can test the form out. So we go to live form. Let's select lesson one, continue. And it goes to the spreadsheet lesson. If we go back, select lesson two, go to the database lesson. If we go back, we can go to the word processing lesson, continue, and there's our word processing lesson. If we add some information in here, it goes to the next page and we can see our word processing video here. And then finally, we can just submit the form. So that's an idea on how you could create a nonlinear form to question your students at the end of your lesson. So for every lesson, you would have another option on your form. Now we want to add lesson four. So what we can do, we can edit, we can add a fourth option in here, lesson four, and we'll call this robotics. Click done. And now we can go back to the bottom of this screen and we can add a new item, a new page break, which would be lesson four robotics. So once you've added the page, you can start adding the questions. And then finally, what you need to do is go up to the top and then you need to link that final robotics page to the robotics page there. You must make sure that the previous lesson at the bottom after the page, it now goes to the link where it says submit form. The robotics page will automatically go to the submit form page once it's finished. One final thing I'd like to speak to you about. As you can see, I've named the questions one spreadsheets, two spreadsheets, three spreadsheets. So this is question one, two, and three. Now, the actual question I've put inside the help text. So this becomes the title of the question and this becomes the help text. Because there are times where you want to manipulate the data within the spreadsheet and things like question marks don't work too well. My advice is when you're developing the questions, you give them a standard format. You can always go back and have a look what the question is, but one, spreadsheets, and then you can see here two and three. And then when I come on to databases, we're looking at one databases, two databases, etc. This way of doing things makes the spreadsheet much easier to read, and these become the field names within the spreadsheet. In the next screencast, we're gonna look at how you can change the design of your form and look at some of the other features within the menu system on Google Forms.